also as a pilgrimage, coming to a holy place. So what does it mean when we come to a pilgrimage, when we come to a holy place? It also means to come to a place to receive blessings. Generally speaking, when you talk about blessings, there are three different ways of blessings. There is when a person can bless another person. For example, when Rinpoche is invited to the villages to bless everyone. For example, this is one person blessing another. Blowing and people asking they are sick and so on and so on. Then there is when a person can bless the land. And so, so what happens is like, uh, for example, in these many places that we have been, many, many great practitioners have been here for many, many centuries. So, this land are blessed. Why? Because holy people have been here. This is also the same way we can see also in the practical way. Like uh, when people come and they invite Rinpoche to come to see, to come to one place, to come to a village, to come to a monastery and so on, to bless the land also. And the third type of blessing is when a land can bless a person. Because what happens is that when a holy being, an enlightened being comes to a place, he's blessing that land, his energy remains there. And then afterwards, other people that come, they can receive that energy, they can receive that blessings from the land. Okay? So in this way, when we come here, we come for different reasons. But one of the reasons why we come for, why we come for pilgrimage to this land. Uh, this is a place where so many holy beings, enlightened beings have come, have practiced, have, received, have had realizations for such a long time. Starting, you know, Buddhism is here for more than 1,500 years and such great masters if we look here. Like, even if we put look related only to our own direct lineage, there is, for example, Panchen Sampotashik, uh, Kajan Sapela, so many other great masters which were here at this land. So, actually, all the monasteries where we go and the places where we go, we don't go for as a pilgrimage because we like to see the statue. Okay? <coughs> the point is not seeing the images, which is also important. But the main point is that in these places, so <laughs> many. <laughs> With so many people with high realizations have been here. And which is also saying so many, they're what we call people that have reached the uh, illusory body. Which means great practitioners that still live around here with a subtle body. So when we go to all these places, we receive these blessings. And by this, it helps us to transform our minds, to realize our wishes, so that we make our prayers, you know. So some of us, uh, we may come to Tibet, because we have a specific reason, a specific wish. Others of we may come here, maybe we have a sickness that we want to cure, maybe we just want to develop more into our spiritual path. We can have different reasons. No? So, for example, for us, ourselves, as a healer, as a therapist, as a psychiatrist, as a doctor, and so and so on, to develop more qualities, to be able to help others, to have more energy, to help others, and so and so on. So we come here in this way as a pilgrimage. This is very important for us to remember and this has been done in a successful way. During all these days that we have been here together, we are still here. And uh, so... So this is one reason. One reason why we come to Tibet is as a pilgrimage. For us to receive the blessings, you know. Blessings also have the meaning... Also. There are many stories, which maybe I'm going to say tomorrow, maybe I can tell you in the bus. Uh, so what happened is that this is one reason why we come here, okay? It's as a pilgrimage to receive the blessings because the blessings helps us to transform our mind in a in, a, in a subtle way. It directs and also to realize the wishes that we want. Second thing is that uh, in our spiritual path we need to accumulate merit and wisdom, and to accumulate merit in its effort. So by coming. To go, to go to a pilgrimage, it also means that actually we need to put effort. So in this way we are accumulating virtue, we are accumulating merit, positive energy. You know? And this is true, it depends, for, for our level we are already doing quite a lot of effort. Coming here, you know, from different points of view. Physically, from ten different countries we come here. And for many of us, you know, for most of us to come here is not obvious. We come from so far away. We need to put so much effort until we reach here. We spend a lot of money, which money means energy that we have invested, for us to be able to come here. Why? For a pilgrimage and so on. So all of this it means actually putting effort, investing our energy. 
And in this way, this is what is helping us also to develop our own uh, merit, to accumulate positive energy, to accumulate merit, which is very important also into our own spiritual path. It's very important for us to understand and to see with our own eyes our lineage. Okay? Because, you know, there are many days in these in this days in the West, there are many teachers that they just come and start inventing something. We can have a Lama, we don't know if it's a true Lama, fake Lama, what it is. Maybe there are, are fake Lamas. There are Lamas which maybe they are not fake, but still have no real background. No? Instead, it's important for us to come and to see our lineage where it comes from. To come to see the places, come to see the masters, come to see that, for example, as we have seen starting from Demogon Rinpoche place to here, the respect that is given to Rinpoche, everywhere where we go, to see that actually, uh, by this we, we can understand better the value of what we receive when we are back at home in the West, of, of the teachings and everything else. So this is also another aspect which is important for us. It's like actually, we already for many years we follow our practices, we do our uh, receive teachings, we go to the Dharma Center, some people are new, some people have already been doing for a very long time, but we do something there, far away. Coming here is actually going to the root, to the source, saying, okay, where all of this comes from? Let me see how it is, where it is, and so on. In this way also, making the link with our own lineage also more strong. So this is very important also for us. Okay? Uh, it's also, at the same time, it has the meaning, it's like, you know, when we come some, from so far away, for example, these monks that have been helping here, us here these days. You can see how happy they are to help us and so on. Why? Because they see that we follow the same lineage. We are from the same family, somehow. So it's important for us also that are far away in the West, when we come here, to see actually that there are people on the other side of the world, in Tibet, and we are actually following the same path together. So this is also important for us to see here. The fourth point, which is important also for us to see, is that Many of us have been helping Rinpoche in different ways, making offerings and so on. And uh, Rinpoche is saying, I don't use this money that people give me to buy clothes. I don't use it to buy new shoes. This is the shoes that I'm here. It's the fourth year that I come to Tibet with the same pair of shoes. You know? And so and so on. But they actually, to be sincere, most people that Rinpo most <coughs> money that Rinpoche receive is not money for specific projects. They are few people that like to help specific projects and send money, for example, for planting trees or for making the water projects or for helping a specific monastery. This is very, very, very few. There are many other people that they come and they make an offering, you know. I'm rich. Let me say, all the money that comes to Rinpoche Ken that you see giving is all money that people come and make some small offering everywhere. So Rinpoche is saying, it's important also for you to see what happened with this money. <coughs> because Roger Rinpoche, he accumulates and he comes here, then he's helping many monasteries and uh, the people, the local people, and helping all of this. So it's also important for you to see directly with your own eyes this. It's not something that normally we are talking about, because the greatest value is something that you can see with your own eyes. Generosity. You know? In the way, also the importance for us to learn generosity. For example, this I just add myself. No? I remember in the beginning, many years ago, you know, Rinpoche would go to monasteries like bank accounts in Italy, everything, take everything out, completely, you know, and then take all the money, give everything away. Then people from Italy will be calling, we need to pay the bill, where is the money, you know. Ah, don't worry, we'll find a way out. No? <laughs> and then they would just make like a backpack full of money and to give to the poor people everywhere. <laughs> So Rinpoche is like to say that actually Louisa Haller is an old friend of Rinpoche and she came some years ago, she came to Rinpoche and said, Rinpoche, I like actually the Lomongi Chimanura. Many, many years ago, okay, more than 20 years ago, Louisa came to Rinpoche and said, Lord Rinpoche, I like to help you, so I'm going to open an account in Swiss for you and put 100,000 Swiss francs so that every year, every month, every month you have the, how do you say? Interest. You have the interest money, and so with the interest you have more than enough for you, you know? For your needs you have more than enough. So please, you don't touch the main money, you just use the interest and you have more than enough. <laughs> so then the first time Rinpoche went to Tibet, all the money already finished. <laughs> so, anyhow, 
Tibetan bank, not my bank. So let me just say, he didn't put in his bank, in Tibet bank. <laughs> so anyhow, one way, also Rinpoche was saying, we come from rich countries, where we have everything, generally speaking. So, to also to have the experience, <coughs> not to have things and to be a little bit more difficult, it's good also for us. We can learn a lot of things from that, in one way. You know? So this is something that is very important. From another way, just I add something small <coughs> on this. We come from a country where we have a lot of money, everything. Still, we have a very difficult relationship with money, yes. where we come from, you know. Yes. It's a very difficult relationship with money. Instead, we can see here how easy it moves, especially Rinpoche, you know. <laughs> it's like always, like when Rinpoche was living in money India. Money is nectar. My <laughs> <laughs> it's going away. <laughs> also, if you see, like for example, in Cam, when we've been to Yushu, you know, people, they want to give so much money, they're always giving money, you know. So... <laughs> <laughs> so if you see Rinpoche stayed how many days? Four days there? Yeah, yeah. In the in this region? Yeah. The people made so many offerings, 15,000 euros <gasps> of offerings. Just like 20 yuan, 100 yuan, 5 yuan. And you, you cannot say no, they just give you. No? And there's all this money went to the monastery after Rinpoche offered there. No? Yeah. Remain there. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, this is a way we have a lot of difficulty, but actually, why? Because money is energy. You know? it's, a, it's a result of something that we have done, it's energy. So it depends where, the more it moves, the better it is. But the more, there is a different idea that when you give to others, you gain yourself, you accumulate merit. So this idea that you have always our accumulating merit of making things to move on. It's very important. You know? So, and actually, I just add myself. This, what, this attitude that you see Rinpoche acting today is not new. <laughs> when Rinpoche was very poor, like many years ago in India, he used to be called the, la the, the Lama of the poor. <coughs> because he used to go, normally when you call a Lama to make a prayer, a puja, you need to make an offering. And many people were very poor, they didn't have money. But then Rinpoche, he would go to, house, to one house to make puja, he knew someone in the puja, so he would just go, just go there, talk it, and he would do the puja for them. You know, they had sickness, they would do healing, anything else. And then people say, I have this problem, I have that problem. Okay, so he would lend money from someone that had a little bit more, and he would give to the one that had no money. <laughs> and then he would continuously do that. Then one day he had a lot of debts around. <laughs> then he went, he received offerings, and then he could pay everything again. You know? <laughs> so he always had this attitude of seeing money as a way of energy that we can move and we can make <coughs> things happen out of it. So this is something that you have seen with your own <coughs> eyes. <coughs> by coming here, from here, from <coughs> Demogosha also, so it's also something which is important. So these were mainly, let's say, the four points that Rinpoche brought up, which is one, the fact of us coming here as a pilgrimage. No? There is also, in some texts it says, when you pray and have no results, when you meditate and have no results, when you study and have no results, go for a, to go for a pilgrimage. No? It was because pilgrimage is very powerful. So it's something that transforms us internally, especially when we come from so far with so, such great effort and so and so on. <coughs> this is the first point. Second point, actually the importance for us of knowing our own lineage, of recognizing our own lineage, where it comes from and so and so on. And then we had the third point, which... Well, So for us to see what is being done here, to see the place. For example, you have seen so many trees, no? For, for example, many years ago, because I remember when the first time Rinpoche started to plant trees here, how many years? Eleven ago? years ago. Eleven? Eleven years ago. 2001 was the first project to plant trees. I remember very well people saying from behind here, oh, come on, Ramakanshan is crazy. Why he wants to plant trees here? They will not grow. There is no way, you know. And Rinpoche with so much effort saying, yes, I want to plant trees here. For so many years until today, putting so much effort. Then now you see everywhere around the government planting trees. You know? After 10 years, since last year, they saw that it worked, so they also started to plant trees everywhere. You know? So but for 10 years, Rinpoche was just planting trees here and in other places also, with a lot of effort. So all of this, you can see this, so it's very good for us to see this with directly with our eyes. Yeah.
So anyhow, in essence, the most important thing is all your sufferings and worries and sicknesses and problems. You leave them here in Tibet. <laughs> You leave them in the moonland behind Ganche. <laughs> As you go on the road, you leave them around. Okay? You leave all your worries, all your anger and whatever your negative you have, you just leave them here. And all the good things, all the joy and the happiness and good energy. good energy and strength and everything, this you take with you. From now until enlightenment. <laughs> So also it's important for us to remember that uh, back in the West we have many projects, many things. If we just take for example Brazil, there is life as clear light, there is the Campos do Jordão, Great Love Temple, now that we are building a new stupa in Minas Gerais of like Borobudur, there is a <coughs> Dharma Center, many other study groups and Dharma Centers around in Buzios and everywhere. And so, ma so many, many, many things are being done. So in the same way, if we look in Italy now, there is uh, the center in Albaniano, which I would say is also his main center, like his central center in the West. So it's important for us to dedicate also. And oh, and everywhere we go, we have projects. Like now we are making, re re remaking the Borobudur in Albaniano, which is actually the main prayer hall there in Albaniano also. So actually, I would say, it's also important from here to dedicate our p positive energy, our merits, also for all the projects that we have everywhere. This is also very important. In the same way, also like help in action. Actually, there is a lot of work. It's not that we finish here and we go there and we have nothing to do. You know? When going back, there is a lot to do. Starting from each situ city, everywhere we go, there is a small center or a bigger center or a specific project. We have our cook of Albaniano here. Still need to put a lot of energy when we go back. And so and so on. So. Mr. to be coming so, so you know Roberto is the cook of Albaniano Center and uh, actually Mr. Yan, he was the one who offered him to come to Tibet. He offered him the trip also for him to come to Tibet. Why? Because, remember to say, why? Because he needs to work well in Albaniano. <laughs> so for good energy for that. So, uh, we would say, anyhow, when we go back, we have a lot of things to do. It's not that everything ends here and we have nothing to do. So it's very important for us to dedicate our energy so that we continue also to accumulate and to follow a good direction. Okay. Also, we must remember Pit that have, bring, have brought a lot of seeds from different mm. places and planting them together and so on. Mm. This is also very important. It's generally speaking very important for our environment, <laughs> especially for this world here. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just saying, also even to plant just one seed from one place to the other and to do it in the right way and so on, even one action as that is important for the, this world. <laughs> So, in essence, the most important thing is that uh, we are like different deities of the same mandala, like living in the same mandala. Rinpoche say, like we Rinpoche being in the sense that, or we can call in this way, or we can call having the feeling of being of the same family, which means going in the same direction, having the same wishes, being together in the sense. If we are being able to develop this sense of family, of union, is actually much more precious than giving hundreds of hours of teachings. So this is something very important that we should not lose. I'm just saying, Rinpoche like being the center deity of the mandala, mm -hmm. I am like the Alama action Vajra <laughs> going around, mm -hmm. and then we are all together, you know, working for the same direction. When we say, oh Rinpoche la, Rinpoche la, what do you wish, what do you want? Always going all together, our minds, our hearts going in the same direction. So this is very, very important. This is something that we should not lose and we should always cultivate. This is the most precious thing that we should cultivate of all. At the same time, with that, what's the mission that we have? To bring to this world what is missing. What we call the missing path. We have so many things in this world, especially in the West, a lot of development and many, many aspects, which is great, but we need to bring what is missing. And then, and to help to develop more what is already there. 
<coughs> so, <coughs> what does that mean? It means that if we look, for example, in the West, uh, very often it happens, we have so many people, we have good jobs, we have a nice house, we have good food, we have good clothes, we cannot, good medical care, we cannot complain about all of that, but still, we are always complaining, I am unhappy, <laughs> I am unsatisfied, <laughs> I don't have this, why this, why I do this job, why is this like you know, this, you know. why is this like that, <laughs> I am stressed up, I don't have that, we are always that. So what does that mean? It means that we have a lot, but we don't have the essence. We are missing the actual point. We are missing the essence. So it's on that point where we work. Even if it's only reciting one mantra of Omani Pemya Hum, we already start giving some essence, already start to give some joy. So this is what we should do. Each one doing our own job. Rimbach was mentioned before also, for example, <coughs> said in Holland, working as a doctor, a psychiatrist, you know, bringing the essence to psychiatry also. Insight. Insight, you know, this world, which is also very important. So Rinpoche is saying, Rinpoche and me, we are also working together with the psychiatrists. We are not a psychiatrist, <laughs> but you are working together with them. Why Rinpoche is saying? Because we bring the essence which is missing. No? So, this is something which is very important for us to remember. Each one of us, we are working together in the same direction, in this sense. Yes, yes. What is this essence? <laughs> So, the essence, it means to find joy, mm -hmm. independently of where we are, mm -hmm. of our material situation, mm -hmm. of our health, mm -hmm. or with who we are. <coughs> and this essence is the essence, is the joy that comes from our own spiritual path. <coughs> it's the joy of following our spiritual path. It's the joy of having a satisfaction that comes from within and not needing to look it outside. So Rinpoche said, making a very small, simple example of that, many years ago when Rinpoche was living in Gubbio in Italy, so I'm around, what, 25 years ago maybe? Mm -hmm. <coughs> One time Rinpoche sent uh, his attendant, which was Claudio Cipullo, like, and he sent Claudio to pick up someone by car. And he was never coming back, you know. Mm -hmm. So Rinpoche at a certain point sent someone to look what happened. And actually, he had made an accident. And he broke his leg quite badly. So he sent a message back saying, Oh, he didn't say, oh, I am bad, send me a doctor. He said, said, oh, can you please send me my daily prayers books? I, I need to do my prayers, you know. <laughs> so there, when Rinpoche went there to see, he was full of blood, you know. Just making his mantras and his prayers, he was quite happy, you know, he was just there. Just, he was happy that he was doing his prayers and his mantras, <laughs> and then he was there taken by the car full of blood and everything else, and he was, had no problem with that. He could take refuge, he was happy with his own internal state, you know. So this is what we mean by finding the essence within our own spiritual path. It's finding a state of happiness that comes from our spiritual practice and that goes beyond, actually, uh, our material world. It's the fact of actually not looking anymore for our happiness within the material world. So even if we can be, you know, almost dying with a very sick body, but internally we are still <coughs> stable and happy. This is what we mean by finding the essence. <laughs> but this essence, uh, this essence is something that you need to experience. It's not something conceptual that you can explain by words. It's something that we need to know through our own experience. Another example is, for example, Belle. She, as a psychologist, helping people, terminal ill patients, 
How many times it happened, for example, some people, they are so sick <coughs> and they are so <coughs> angry and difficult that they don't want to meet our f their family, they don't want to talk to anyone and so on. Then by going there, talking a little bit with them, doing self-healing, and then such a big difference after. Then they say, oh, I want to see my family, I want to thank them, I want to say sorry. A big difference happens. So, Ramaji is saying also this, even if it's not directly, even through other people, Ramaji is saying, for example, through a psychologist like Bell, in the same way, through the practice of self-healing and through the blessings and so on, how many things have happened, how many people have felt this essence also. For example, you know Lama Wanchuk, the one that was here, little one with the moustache, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. Also been he was also in Demogon Sarupur together with us. So he has a lot, he's a very knowledgeable Lama, has a great knowledge and so on and so on. So he was able to show the different practice, like self-healing, we have Samaja practice and so on. And then he said to Rinpoche, really, if in my life I am able just to practice this as you teach for me is more than enough. Because as you are teaching, you are really giving the essence. So this is what we need to practice. You love to say something patient? Uh-huh. Well, I, um, I'm a family, uh, family doctor and I have to uh, 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 support one patient who was uh, also dying. And uh, this patient, uh, in fact, was a colleague of mine, so <coughs> old family doctor. And uh, he always uh, said to his family, when I'm going to die, I, w I will uh, take euthanasia. And uh, he was very sure about this. And um, I had to take care in this process, and I spoke to my wife about this. And I said, well, I am, I am personally, I can, I can give him this help of euthanasia, but uh, what to do? And then he's, we, we spoke some, and, um, and we just l let the, the process go. So I did my dedication, I prayed, and uh, we spoke many, uh, many times, and he, he changed completely. And his mm. family was so surprised in, 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 uh, in fact that they saw him changing, and they said, how is it possible? He always wished for euthanasia, and now he's just uh, accepting this process of, of dying. And um, the family was so happy, he, he, he died peacefully with that euthanasia, and it was, uh, it was a <coughs> beautiful, uh, process and for me a huge imprint uh, of uh, uh, using all the tools and all the seeds that uh, that we learned from the Dharma to put into practice and see the, the result of it. So uh, I'm very happy. How many get up again? Because this is your. My aunties, I mean, maybe I get control number one. They can say sorry, but something that is bothering. Me. This thing that uh, you have to do without things, without expecting results. So it means that even nothing happens, you continue. Yes. For me, it's not that clear. <laughs> Maybe these results you don't see, even if they happen. It's just the fact that you don't have to uh, have expectation. <laughs> So Rinpoche said, uh, from what I see, Rinpoche is saying, I see great results in Louisa, for example, in all these years that I know you. But at the same time, what happens is that very often we are attached to an image of what we understand by result, what's the final way where we want to reach. Mm -hmm. And yes. until we don't see the big picture, we cannot see all the steps that are going to get to the big picture. So this is also one, imp one important thing. Mm. I know this, I know that synergy. Mm. Uh. <laughs> 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 saying, it happens very often in the West, generally speaking. We think we know many things. We say, oh, I know this, I understand that, I know this, I know that. But we don't have the feeling, we don't have the real experience. We don't have the realization of it. There is a big difference actually between understanding something and realizing it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that we may feel unsatisfied <coughs> by thinking, I understand, but how come I don't have the experience? Because actually things are gradual and takes time. And if we are attached to one image of result, what happens is that we cannot see all the steps that are going in between. 
So also there is a difference, you know, depending in which time we were born, the experiences that we had. But in the same way that desire, generally speaking, is said to have no end. The more I get, the more I want. You know? So in the same way, actu actually we have very much an attitude in the West that whenever we, have we make our own goals, it's never enough. Mm. We get something, it's never enough. We always need something more. We always need something more. But actually, if we look, for example, <coughs> people that come from the generation that have gone through the war, like the Second World War, for example, you know, they have a different type of satisfaction normally. They are more happy with what they have. They, are, they, don't, they don't have such, like, uh, infinite wishes that they never end. Mm -hmm. While if we look, for example, the more young generation that have never really gone through real difficulties somehow, it's never <coughs> enough. Everything that is there is never enough. We <coughs> always need more, always need something different, and so on and so on. So this is actually somehow one attitude which is a habit that we have generated very mu very strongly out of never gone never never having gone through real <laughs> difficulties so we will always need and this is uh, the essence of our own <laughs> desire <you know? laughs> by we say also when we get the object of desire what we get actually is insatisfaction because we always want more and more and more and more so we adapt also this to the our own style of our life normally you know? uh. Before Luisa s said, uh, this is what came in my mind to share, <coughs> no? I'm a baby by speaking Portuguese, no, I... So, uh, before <coughs> coming here, there was one lady and uh, her daughter was, she came to see my mother, she came to see Belle in the, her, uh, how do you say, conservatory? Yeah. Yeah. Private practice place. And uh, it was this lady her daughter was killed very shortly before with a shot in the head in one, uh, like, kidnapping, not one. So in another city in the north of Brazil. So yeah. she came there after that, and uh, every she, so she did with her the exercises, how she did normally and everything else. And there was a, mo a moment after that that they were just holding the hands together and just sharing the suffering, like just uh, sharing the suffering without judging anything, without judging what is right or wrong, without trying to understand, just sharing the suffering together in this way. And at a certain point, this lady, she started to cry very, very deeply. And you could see that was a, a, a cry that was not coming like uh, superficial, was very, very deep. And later she said, after that, she said, <coughs> it's the first time while I was holding her hands in this moment, I felt that it was the first time in my whole life where I could be myself with someone. I simply could be myself without needing to do anything else. So now I can feel that I can deal with this situation and now I can feel that I can go through a healing process through this. You know? So, and then after that my mother said that they she was coming to Tibet <coughs> and she said, oh, could you please actually <coughs> take a picture? If you're able to take a picture of me, my daughter and my grandson to Tibet, then I'm sure that everything will just go fine. You know? So, and she didn't have any idea about Buddhism or what my mother was, anything at all. So this is a, my mother says, it's an example actually of how like this essence that Rinpoche is bringing, the blessings, how it's working also. Um, no, I think one thing which is important for us to understand, generally speaking, at this moment maybe we have some more space to try to observe it and to understand it, is the fact that actually, you know, nothing comes from nothing. Everything that happens it goes through a gradual process. And there are many different small causes here and there that makes a big difference. You know? Like these days that we have been traveling, we saw so many things. <laughs> Sometimes we may ask, oh, we just go to a temple, oh, but just go and we finish. You know? I say, what's the point of it? You know, we may ask ourselves. And uh, we may come here and we may think, oh, we see so many things. But actually, every word that we say, every action we do, have a very important influence in the whole of our life. <coughs> you know? So the experience that I have had until now from all the people that came to Tibet, generally speaking, is that it's not an easy trip. For some people physically it's very difficult, for other people emotionally it's very difficult. But it always makes some change in the life of everyone that comes. <coughs> so the point is that actually, by coming to these places, by seeing holy people, by coming to these holy places, it's really like changing something within our mind. And these, I think, is the most important things also for us to understand 
as we are here. No? So really like, uh, also for us, as we come, as we understand it, to pray, may, as what Rinpoche was saying, may I leave here all our negative habits, you know, <laughs> because it's very precious what Rinpoche says that we need to take our negative habits and negativities and live here, which means, first of all, we should not identify ourselves with them. I can live, I can exist without these attitudes. I can live, I can exist without these habits, without these negativities. So this is the first thing. And then, and by doing this, it really makes a difference, especially when we're in a holy place with this pure attitude and so on. <laughs> the point is that today we got this short time to talk here together, and which is very happy of it. Which says a short time but with good quality. Yeah. 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 So Om Ahum Karuna Karuna Mahakaru Arya Karuna Yesoha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Mama Ayur Punye Gyana Pustin Kuru Yesoha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Tu Tare Tu Tare Ma 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 Tarema, Madhu, that liberates from samsara. Tutare, you who liberates from the eight fears. Ture, you who liberates from all sicknesses. To you, the great liberating Madhu, I prostrate. Omane Benehu, 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 Omane